All right, guys, welcome back. So let's catch up. Um, I'm not in prep yet. I just want to now that I've like come back from vacation, set a plan with Ruben, like did all this stuff, like ready to catch you guys up. So let's talk about vacation. <laughs> vacation was wild. When I say vacation was wild, I just mean the amount of oatmeal cookies and pizza that I ate is out of control. Like, it's out of control. The amount of, okay, first off, both of those things were available pretty much 24 hours a day. The cookies actually were available 24 hours a day. The pizza, I think they closed at like 3 p.m. Or, sorry, 3 a.m. Um, so like, that's what was available. Plus, obviously, buffets at every meal, pretty much. So, let's talk about what happened on vacation. So, my plan going into vacation was hit your protein targets, eat vegetables, drink water, live your life. Protein targets, great. Every morning at breakfast, I had an egg white omelet with all the veg. Um, you know, I like meat, so I ate meat and I like just made sure that I always had meat at every meal. Like, so I had that egg white omelet and a like smoked salmon bagel every single breakfast. You know, some days I also had bacon. Some days, you know, I always had other stuff, but we're just talking about protein. Like that's what I had. I had those two things every single day plus whatever else I had, waffles, pancakes, whatever. Lunch, same thing. I always just had like whatever protein was available at the lunch buffet. So usually like roasted chicken or I had a burger one day, um, you know, whatever. I had stir fry one day and just like added double protein to it. Dinner, same thing. Obviously like whatever the entree options were. Some days I had two entrees because the serving sizes were not a uh, fit for a hungry bodybuilder. Um, and then one night we did the dinner buffet, which literally one of my one of my plates, because obviously at a buffet we're getting more than one plate, was only meat. It was a steak, a piece of salmon, and like a pork loin. It was out of control. <laughs> but I also had vegetables at every single meal as well. Had a lot of water. I didn't drink as much alcohol, honestly, as I anticipated. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, alcohol on cruises hits different when you're paying for it yourself. <laughs> Gonna be completely honest. Every time I've been on a cruise, somebody else has paid for it. Well, one one cruise I paid for myself. Um, when my best friend turned 30, we went on a cruise. Um, but every other cruise, somebody else was paying for everything. So it's easy to just like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna get the drink package that's like $100 a day. Um, no, I did not get a drink package and I was like, you know, at $10 a pop, like, do I really need another Prosecco? Probably not. So anyway, so that actually was a good thing. It's like, now granted, you guys, I don't drink a lot. Like, but, you know, like, I normally, if I were like on this vacation and honestly, and I wasn't trying to not spend billions of dollars, like, I'd probably have one or two glasses of wine at dinner and then like if we were going out, which we did sometimes like to karaoke or whatever, like have another one um, or you know, whatever. All that to say, I didn't drink that much. Um, I But I had a lot of dessert and a lot of pizza. Exercised only on our cruising days or worked out intentionally, right? Like got a lot of steps on every single day, but intentionally like went to the gym, worked out only on our cruising days. So we would wake up, go to breakfast, drop Reagan off at the kids area, then go work out. Then after our workout, go pick her up and then go on with our day, go to the pool, go whatever. So all in all, I think it was a pretty reasonable thing. So much dessert, so much. I had dessert at every single meal, including breakfast. I don't have, I don't have any regrets about it. I, so that was the, that was right after the show and now we've been home for another like two weeks um and I'm about 145 
So that is 14 pounds up from my from my Ben Weider stage weight. So this is probably where we're going to live. Um, you know, I tend to gain more weight in my off season for a couple of reasons. One, because I never really care about my food. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real. I know most people have like some sort of reverse plan in place. And I actually did have a reverse plan in place last year. Um, and I followed it pretty well. Uh, but I also was actively trying to gain as much muscle as humanly possible. So like we were less worried about the weight gain and more worried about building muscle. This season, I don't have time to prioritize building a lot of muscle. Like I'm gonna build as much as I can. Um, but that's just not necessarily the priority here. The priority is staying within striking distance of stage condition um, and seeing new skills happen, improving, increasing skills. So that means, like, like I said, I'm around 145 right now. Like that's pretty much as high as we're going to go. Like if, if I get like to the 150 mark, like we're going to do a mini cut. Like that's too far off. Like that's a 20 pound gap from my stage weight and honestly when you're trying to get in stage condition that five pounds like it might not seem like a big deal like oh Andrea you're 15 pounds up and you're saying 20 pounds up is too much yeah that five pounds makes a big difference in how you look on stage um a huge difference especially when you're that lean there's a six minute um, slowdown caused okay. by a crash in four miles you are still on the fastest route I was wondering why there was so much traffic there's a crash um, okay, so plan is stay close enough so that I don't have to do a whole 20 week prep. I'm probably going to still do a 20 week prep, but the difference is before I had to have a minimum of 20 weeks to come in any sort of condition. Now it's like I want 20 weeks to be plenty of time. Um, so hopefully the first time I get on stage I feel good because for me the first time I get on stage I never feel great I always go into that first show like am I tight enough am I lean enough oh I should have actually tried harder during this prep I always like go into that first show with so many regrets about how prep went or like wishing I would have started earlier or wishing I wouldn't have cheated so much of the time right like I've already talked about how I've never had like a 100% compliant prep not even 90 honestly so I don't want to have to have 20 weeks to feel good. I want 20 weeks to feel like it was plenty of time and that first show at 20 weeks, I feel good. Because normally it's like 20 weeks, I feel all right. But like 23, 24, I'm like, yes, this is what I want to look like. So I'm hoping by staying closer to stage condition and by actually having a good, the best prep of my life, you guys, I'm, I'm speaking it into existence. I am going to have the best prep of my life and when I say best I mean highest level of effort highest level of it highest level of adherence stay within striking distance adhere actually follow your plan if I can do both of those things 20 weeks should be plenty of time um so anyway before that prep starts though I'm we're basically gonna attempt a recomp try to stay as close to maintenance maybe a couple pops of surplus here and there as we can so that again we can try to build some muscle but it's not it's just not the number one priority because the reality of the situation is is that if I have to compete in the summer the amount of progress that I can make as far as muscularity and this is at maximum adherence, maximum intensity, like prioritizing muscle building. The amount of progress that I can see is not going to be big enough to be to make a difference in whether I get qualified or not, in my opinion. Obviously, you never know until you know. However, the amount of improvements I can make to my routine in that amount of time are huge. So then if I just come in a little bit better in my physique, but a lot better in my routine, that's already pretty good. Then we just think that that's the 
that that's going to set me up for the best chances to qualify for the Olympia. I'm not going to build a Kristen Pulp back in the next two months before I have to start a diet again. It's not going to happen. But what I can do is master some of my previously sketchy skills and or acquire new skills that will set me up to consistently, maybe not consistently, right? Because it's subjective and you never know who's going to show up, but like to more, more than not, more often than not win the routine round. So I can win a show. You can't win a show without winning the routine round. That only happened two times this season. It happened at the Olympia. Oksana won without winning the routine round. And it happened at Ben Weider. <laughs> Michelle won without winning the routine round. So it's like, if I want to win, like, yes, I want to build some density in my back and I keep talking about my back, but I have to win the routine round. And for me, where my physique is like, oh, it's close, it's close, it's close. I have to win it across the board because not winning it across the board cost me the Olympic qualification. Um, so that's just what the focus is. I got to come in tighter. That was never my feedback. I think I mentioned that that was never my feedback. However, I also know that if I come in tighter, that will make some of these discrepancies in my muscularity. It will make them a little bit smaller, right? You look bigger, especially like when it's just you, you look bigger when you're peeled. Your shape looks better, some of us, right? Like your shape looks better when you're peeled. Um, your shoulders look bigger when you're peeled because you have deeper cuts which make these muscles look bigger. Like if you look at someone like Sarah, Sarah's not a big person, she's tiny. However, the proportions of her muscles to her body when she's peeled make her look very, like bit very. They make her look big. Kate Arrington was a fantastic example of this too. Like I remember seeing her, like meeting her in person and I was like, oh, I'm bigger than you. Um, and she told me, she said, come in peeled, you'll look bigger. Um, so that's the thing. It's like, I'm not gonna build that much muscularity, but I can build a little and then just come in super peeled and come in with a significantly better routine. That's, that's the recipe, right? So that's the plan. I don't know what show I'm doing shows I'm doing so whenever you see me put X weeks out it's just because I don't know it's not because I'm trying to be cryptic and like make sure nobody knows when I'm competing I'm not like that you guys know I I like to share and I, I like the accountability and I like for people to cheer me on and watch like I was actually amazed at how many people like watch this that I had no clue watch this like oh people actually watch my YouTube like so I like the accountability of people knowing when and where I'm competing so when I know, you'll know. Um, I have some ideas of where I want to compete, when I want to compete, but we're not, we probably won't really actually pull the trigger, make a decision until it's closer to when I'm going to prep. Um, so that will probably be in the, I mean, again, depending on the show, shows that I'm going to start with, that'll probably be like maybe late January or February, sometime like that. But anyway, so this series is going to be called Earn It. I thought about it. So I mentioned on my wrap up for Ben Weeder that it was like, you know, Taylor's in her prove it. She's proven it to her and I'm proving it to myself. But I don't want to steal her little thing. Like hers is prove it. I can't also be prove it. Right. Kristen Popes is on a mission. I can't also be on a mission. I mean, I can't also be on a mission, but I don't want to like be taking people's um, like series titles because that's boring. Um, plus you want to be able to differentiate like between which series you're watching. So this series is called Earn It because like I mentioned in my Ben Weeder wrap up, I think I'm talented enough to do well. And I'm not, I'm not at all going to discount what I put in to what I've received or earned so far. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to discount myself and say, oh, I got lucky when I turned pro. Oh, I got lucky when I won Toronto Pro. I'm not, I, I do know that I worked hard for those things. However, 
I just feel like for the level of discipline, one, that I expect out of my clients and like the level of intensity and all of those things that I like try to teach to other people, like I feel like I'm above average for that, but for for bodybuilding, I'm definitely below average. And so I want to earn, like I want to truly earn and feel like I did that shit. You know what I mean? Because I feel like that's how I felt after Chattanooga, which like it wasn't my highest ranking, but like Chattanooga is the show and it's so interesting because I've talked about this before and I'm going to sidebar for a second after this. Chattanooga is the show that I just feel like that's the show I just get like fired up about. Like when I look back at my season, Chattanooga is the show that I'm just like, I did that. Why? Because that was the show one that had like the stiffest competition. So like in my opinion, like relatively I did better at that show, but I also did better at that show. Like I came in better. Um, I don't know that I would say my routine was better, but like, that's the show that I feel really, really proud of what I did on stage. It's not the show I ranked highest at. And so I want to, I want to get that Chattanooga feeling. I was crying tears of joy. You guys, I couldn't even control myself how happy and how proud I was after that show compared to how disappointed I was at Ben Weeder, even though I technically did better. I won the routine round at that show and I ranked higher, but I was more disappointed there not just because I didn't win, but also because I didn't win. Just because I didn't feel great about my effort for that show and, and how I looked on stage. And, like, I just didn't feel amazing. Um, so this year I want to I want to combine those high rankings, highest ranking, <laughs> with how I, it, me feeling like I earned that and I did that. Um, and this is the quick sidebar and then I'm probably going to end this here. It's like after the season that I won Toronto Pro, Toronto Pro is the show that I won and I worked really hard there. But Ben Weeder that year was the show that I was like, you did that. Like that was the show I felt really good about. That was the show that whenever I pull up uh, stage shots from that season, that's the show I pick my stage shots from because those are my favorite. My Ben Weeder pictures from this year, you will never see them again. You're never going to see them again besides what I've already posted on the internet. I'm always going to default probably to Legion or Chattanooga this year. If you're trying to get a picture, like if I'm doing a side by side or something like that, like if I'm talking about this season, I'm probably going to pick pictures from Legion or Chattanooga. Even though Ben Weeder's the one I did the best at. That's how it was that year, Toronto Pro. Like, you will never see me post pictures from Toronto Pro that year, even though that's the show that I won. You're going to see me post awards photos. But, like, my stage shots, like, there were, I had a lot going on that year. So, like, I just mentally was, like, not in a great place. And I worked hard. But, like, I just, I wasn't, like, I just wasn't, like, really excited and proud of how I did at that show like I was happy like I knew I did well in my routine and I felt good after like being in the center in the physique round but I was just like I don't know I just didn't feel you know what I mean if you know you know when you get off stage and you're just like hell yes that's the way I wanted to feel like I didn't feel that way after Toronto I just I did feel during awards like oh I guess I won like I don't know I just feel like I wanted to feel like Oh yeah, I just did that like and how many times am I going to say I just did that during this? Anyway, I'm I'm rambling now. I'm going to earn it this year for myself. And I'm going to speak a qualification into existence. But like I said, it's very stiff competition and you just can't I think you you play a dangerous game when you expect to win. I I played that little Russian roulette at Ben Weeder and However, I'm going to set myself up in the best possible way because again, I didn't win Chattanooga, but what I said on the podcast is like I didn't win Chattanooga, but I didn't lose. Like 
So that's why I just want to make sure this year, like, yes, the ultimate goal is an Olympia qualification. So that means I, I have to get first place. So yes, I'm going to train for first place, but I'm not gonna, like, my main goal is to leave every single stage very excited and proud of how I did. Because that's just not a feeling. It's not a feeling that can get changed by a ranking. If it's sincere. Right? Like, it's just, it can't be changed. Like I said, I'm going to talk about Chattanooga. Like, I'm going to refer back to Chattanooga over and over again. Because I did not win that show. But the feeling that I had after that show, after I got off stage... And then after awards, unmatched. Truly. Like, I'm thinking about my entire bodybuilding career, which is not very long, right? Like, I did two amateur shows. Three, including nationals. And I did one, two, three, four, my rookie pro season, the Olympia. So that's eight. And then I did three this year. So I'm, at, I'm 11 shows in total. In fitness and the best feeling I had ever after a show was this year's Chattanooga and I got third place I've won other shows out of my 11 shows I won every single one as an amateur so I won those three as an amateur and I won Toronto so I've won four out of my 11 and my best feeling was a third place and my second place feeling was also a third place. It was Ben Weeder the year before. That was my second best feeling was a third place. So it's like, I just want to make sure I feel good after. But I also think that if I put in the work to feel the way I want to feel, in two miles, I'm going to win. Use the right two lanes to take exit 1C so, for California 1 anyway, North. Now that I've been, Boulevard North toward LAX Airport. Now that I've been talking for 20 minutes, I'm going to let you guys go. That's the update. I'll try to put some training footage, but honestly, you guys, I tried to film my back and shoulder day the other day, and it was a big nuisance. Putting up a tripod in a gym is embarrassing. No offense if y'all do that, but like for me personally, it's embarrassing. I'm not bothered at all by seeing other people do it. My The way this social anxiety is set up, absolutely not. I was like, I can't do this. It's Friday afternoon. There's nobody even here. Um, But I did ask. I put a vlogging camera on my wish list for Christmas. So, if I get that, maybe that will make me feel less embarrassed if it's a real camera because then people will know I'm vlogging and not just like doing it for the gram. I don't know. Anyway, y'all, I'll let you go. One day, maybe I'll put some training footage. I don't even think people care about training footage. I don't, I never watch people's training footage. Um, like, if that's in one of your vlogs, I tap through it. Sorry. I like forward through it. Um, I don't have the attention span for training footage unless I'm like trying to learn something. Um, like in half a mile, use the I right watch, two lanes to take sorry. exit one C for California one North Sepulveda Boulevard North toward LAX. You Airport. know, like if I'm watching, I watch Jody's training footage a lot because she like does a lot of like coaching voiceovers. Like she specifies, like oh if. You know, if you can see on this, you can see the lat, you know, pull down and you see the scapula retracting. And so I'm like watching her training footage, not for entertainment, but for education. But like, I feel Use like a right lot of people, to take XLYC. sorry guys, I feel like a lot of people's training footage is for entertainment, which is fine. But I personally am not entertained by that. So all that to say, I'm probably not going to put a it on there. Mile, merge onto California <laughs> one North South Sepulveda Boulevard. Anyway, that's it.